Hey guys, if you're watching this video, it's probably because of one of two reasons. Either you're just about to get a new puppy, which is super exciting. Or you're not currently sleeping because you already have a puppy at home and you are struggling with crate training. Hey everybody, this is Ethan. And I'm Kat. And we are here to talk to you today about crate training. If this is your first time to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button down below, give us a thumbs up. And if you don't wanna do that, just watch the video and then know that you are not helping us create more videos for you just like this one. <laughs> if you wanna be that guy, be that guy. If not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. Now, we are here to talk to you about crate training and crate training specifically is a problem that a lot of people struggle with. It's also something that can be simple if you follow the steps that we're gonna give you in this video today. And we've already talked about some of these steps, some of these tips and tricks in other videos, but we wanted to talk to you about a specific situation with our new little puppy Trix and how we went about crate training her to sleep overnight, all night, in just three days. What we wanna be able to do here for you folks is show you what Trix's first few nights of crate training looked like. And starting with night number one, that brings us to tip number one. Tip number one is let your puppy out to go to the bathroom prior to putting them in the crate for the night. Yes, it's a huge one. It's very important to know that you have confidence. You watched with your own eyes the puppy pee and hopefully also poop before bed. That way, when you put them in their crate and they start crying, because that's pretty much inevitable, you know that they don't truly need anything. They just need some time to settle down. And folks, this is completely normal. This is probably the first time that the puppies have actually been pulled away from the litter. Now, Kat and I here at Standing Stone, we have a little different procedure than some. We actually start some crate training process, but even then, the puppies are sleeping with another puppy. We don't fully break them out into individuals, but they get this start process of sleeping in a crate, and it's not a normal thing. So if you've got your puppy, this is probably the first time away from their litter mates, first time in a crate, first time doing all of these things. Yes. A lot of firsts. So once Trix went out and had an opportunity to pee and poop, and we had success on both. Super success. Then we put her in her crate, which was located across the room from our bed. Um, and our bedroom set up in a situation where we can actually let her out from our bedroom right outside, which is super convenient, but not necessary for successful crate training. <laughs> super easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs> so we put her in her crate and she- This is about 9, 9.30. Yeah, and she proceeded to let us know she didn't want to be in her crate for about 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and listen to just a little bit of that. minutes of crying in their crate seems like an eternity. So 15 minutes seems like infinitely longer. Three eternities. <laughs> At least three eternities. <laughs> but she did finally settle down and fall asleep. I, I settled down and fell asleep too. And then around one o'clock, she started crying again in her crate. So what did totally we do? Totally normal. Yeah. What did yeah. we do? Got up, let her out. She went out. She peed. She ran right back to the door, let me in, let me in. So I let her in, put her back in her crate, turned the light off, went back to bed, and then she continued to cry. Let's go ahead and listen to a little bit of that. And cry. And cry. Yeah. And cry. For like more. 30 minutes. It was horrible. And then, Oh, I could smell that she pooped in her crate. So she obviously needed something and uh, we 
we were following tip number one, knowing confidently that she had peed and pooped and then let her out again, watched her pee, figured she was good. But accidents happen, folks. And we hadn't learned her cues and her tells yet with just night number one being under our belts. So uh, we got up, cleaned out a poopy crate, Mm -hmm. let puppy out again. Yes. I don't think she did anything when we let her out again. But. I don't think so either, because she just peed and pooped. It just happened to be <laughs> the pooping part in her crate. Um, but then put her back in her crate, and... Um, she cried. Yeah, and she wasn't settling down very well, and Ethan, I think, made the suggestion of, hey, why don't you see if moving her crate over near my bed, our bed, would help. So that brings us to tip number two. If things are not going just right, and it seems to be falling into the category of slightly unreasonable, and really much more than about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of crying is is to the point of unreasonable. We were trying to be strong, and she was trying to tell us she needed something, but we made that adjustment, and this is tip number two. If it's not working, it doesn't seem reasonable, make an adjustment. Okay, so crate placement is important, and that's what we did in this specific situation. We actually moved the crate closer to the bed because I just talked about, this is the first time they've been separated from the litter. This is their litter mates, and what we're trying to do is decrease that amount of separation by moving the crate to as as, as close as is possible without taking the puppy out of the crate. Yeah, I actually, um, once we moved her over near the crate, which you can't really see because the lights are off, because we're trying to get her to settle down and go back to sleep again, but I was able to actually put my hand down by the crate door and kind of stick my fingers just through the grate a little bit. She'd sniff at them, lick at them, and um, it helped her settle down. I don't know, probably still took about 15 minutes. No more 30-minute bark fests, though. Um, And then she laid down, and you could feel the energy kind of drain out of her and she went back to sleep until our alarm went off at five in the morning. So that was night number one, folks. All right, so we got through night number one. Wasn't fantastic, but it was a night to remember. And we got through it and learned from it and we're ready for night number two. So we started night number two the same as night number one with a pee and poop break right before bed. I don't think we got a poop at that point in time. No, I think we just Just got a a pee. Mm -hmm. But she said she was done. We said, huzzah, let's put you in your crate. Now, we made that adjustment, and that was, again, touching back on number two. So we have this crate starting night number two next to the bed to make this a little bit easier, hopefully. But that brings us to tip number three which is don't give up and don't give in. Night number two was marginally better-ish than night number one, but we wanted to make sure that we continued to build on success and not say, oh, I'm so tired. This puppy's just barking and whining and not settling down. I'm just going to bring them in bed. Mm, Yeah. That is like a kiss of death. <laughs> yeah, um, we get we get contacted quite a bit um, about struggling with crate training, and the number one horror story I hear is people saying we just couldn't listen to them bark anymore, so we brought them in bed, and oh, they slept all night long. Yeah, they got what they want. Folks, this is reinforcement-based training. And when you are utilizing reinforcement-based training and it's the dog's idea, it's extremely powerful. We talk about that in a lot of our other clicker training videos and we talk about free shaping. And essentially in this situation, we're free shaping. We're saying, let's see if you can figure out how you can get what you want. Yeah, and your puppy's kind of free shaping you and then they go, hey, this is awesome. Why would I want to sleep in a crate? Of course I'm going to want to sleep in bed with mom and dad forever. And I can sleep all night long. See how wonderful this is and how easy this is. Let me just sleep in bed. Or if you put me back in that crate, I'm just going to cry and cry and cry longer. And cry some more. Until I get what I want because reinforcement based training strengthens behaviors. So puppy will just cry until they get what they want. 
Yes, and as you do things like that, it gets exponentially worse. So, puppy cries, we let them out of their crate. Puppy cries again, we let them out of their crate. Puppy cries, we say, screw it, you can get in bed. And then they're gonna cry forever. So, let's talk about- Not when they're in bed. They're gonna cry forever to get back in bed. To get in back bed. in bed, yes, very good clarification. Let's talk about the actual turn of events on night number two. We went to bed a little bit later that night. It was about 10 o'clock. And we talk about this pretty regularly with people about having a set schedule or having a routine. And the routine that we prefer to have, schedules are not ideal because they're not realistic, but routines are good. When it's bedtime, which is in the evening, which for us ranges a little bit, you go out to go pee and poop if possible before you go in your crate. So we do that, right? Then we had made the adjustment. We start that settle in period and Kat started with the things that worked. She put her hand down there and our settle down was pretty quick. I mean, definitely was, less than 10 minutes. Yeah, it definitely seemed less than the first night. Uh, we'll have to look and see what the exact timing is here, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's easier. It's drastically easier. But then she woke up. What time did she get up at? I think she woke up around two. It was sometime in the middle of the night. Yeah, few hours. She got about two, three hours. And she got up. We went outside, and she peed and pooped because we hadn't gotten a poop prior to her going to bed. We yeah. tried, yep. we tried, we tried. Didn't get it. So it came at around two. She went out. She went both pee and poop back got, in. Yeah, we're golden, we're golden now, baby. <laughs> went back in her crate. And started. again, you can listen here a little bit. We're trying to throw some timestamps in here, but. Uh, she settled down pretty quick. Yeah, it didn't take too long. Mm-mm. But then she got up again. I think like she that. got up at about 3.30. Went out, peed. Uh-huh. Back in her crate. Woke up again at 4. I don't know if she even really fell asleep, but she quieted down. Went back out. I think we got another pee break, um, which is good that she's learning, hey, every time I go out, I get an opportunity to pee. I take care of that. Um, so that we can still build on success and hopefully have the confidence that she doesn't need anything when she goes back in her crate. Yeah. Um, went back in her crate, a little more time to settle down. Then our alarm went off, I think, at 6.30 that morning. Yeah, pushed it. We've got a little bit of flexibility, and I think probably everybody would if, you know, I mean, realistically, we need to be up by about 7 o'clock, but we try and get up about 5 o'clock to be able to get a few extra things done. And so that 5 can can shift a little bit if we go Especially to bed Especially if later. you have a rough first night with your puppy. Yes, exactly. And maybe a rough second night. Now, this is actually going to bring us to tip number 4, and it's a really important one. And that is, even though our schedule changed, okay, do not set alarms. Tip number four, do not set alarms throughout the night because what that's going to create is a precedent and it's going to develop a behavior that is conditioned to get up at the specific times. Now, we know that there were a lot of in and out and we get that question a lot of, well, should I just set an alarm? Or we hear people say, I set my alarm at 1.30 and I let her out every night at 1.30 to make sure that we have success and all of these things. We want to allow her to tell us she needs to go 
to the bathroom. And the same thing with your puppies. Now, what we've that done- That allows their bladders to develop, them to mature, and them to get better at crate training and sleeping through the entire night. Exactly, and what we were able to do from the first night to the second night is understand that things were different, but we had those quiet down periods. She fell asleep and then she woke up and told us, hey, kind of need to go to the bathroom or I'm lonely or something, but we're gonna utilize that as bathroom time. Now, folks, let's go ahead and move into night number three. And this is the big one. We talked about this as being sleep through the night in three nights of crate training, and we are here, folks. This night started at 9.30, and it started exactly like every single other night. We let her out. Went to the bathroom. I think we got a pee and a poop. Based on how the night went, Bingo, baby. I think we got a pee and a poop. <laughs> Put her in her crate. Um, that again, that crate is right next to the bed. We are utilizing the things that we have found are beneficial for her. And we're working with that to help us to be successful as we move along. And she settled down probably in about 10 minutes. Still taking some time to settle down in her crate, but settle down she did. And she slept. And we slept. And she slept. And we slept. Until our alarm went off at 5 a.m. And then I got up, let her out to go to the bathroom, and we started our morning. It was awesome. So it can be done. And not that every night since has been perfect. Puppies have, you know, a night where they need to get up an extra time or something like that. But definitely we were not having the issues that we were having in night number one or night number two. No, nope, she's down to the point where she she goes in her crate. She's settled in in less than probably 60 seconds. Yep. Maybe a little whimper, a little bark, bark, done, goes to sleep. And if she ever needs anything, she lets us know. But for the most part, guys, we're sleeping through the night. And we've actually been able to move the crate away from the bed, back over to where it was across the room from us. So A, it's not a tripping hazard for me when I have to get up in the middle of the night. Um, and she's fine settling in across the room because she knows we're still there and she doesn't need our comfort quite as much as she did in those first few nights. All right, folks, those are the four tips that we recommend that you follow with your puppy to be sleeping through the night in just three nights of crate training. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Kat the dog trainer. And we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.